And what we start with is the so-called very famous hand meditation. And we'll talk more about that in a little bit, what that all is about and um, what this is doing and what it's for. But before we do that, I invite you to have the experience. So the best way to explore that and experience that is you just take something in your hand, whatever that is of your choice. I have here my little piece of wood. What's actually from the Grand, Grand Canyon in US. So it's a, I found it there and I just made it. And anyway, I'll talk more about it in a little bit. And just lean back so that your spine is relaxed, your shoulders are relaxed, so that you know, set yourself up for having a cocktail or something to drink or not in an easy way so that you can, um, yeah. Hold your shoulders and your hands free. I lean my hand on the table. If you have a cushion or something, or lean your arms on the on your laps is always easier. Just for the beginning to find it when you have found it, it's built in in your system, and you can use it anywhere, anytime. But just like to make it easy for you. So feel free to keep your eyes open or close your eyes, whatever feels best for you. And if feelings arise, everything is welcome. And um, I invite you to just make contact. So bring your awareness to that, what you have there in your hands. So just for a moment, just like to really tune in. And so tap into the kind of haptic experience first. So temperature, is it soft or is it hard? And, um, all the information that you need to get to make contact with that and then at one point I ask you to slow down by half and by half again and kind of explore more in areas where it feels kind of nice or pleasant like this tinglish sensation Feel even pleasurable. And we do that for about five, six, seven minutes, something like that. So that you can set your mind for this period of time on a little vacation and just go into sensing and feeling. And just with your skin, with your hands. And then you find a spot somewhere. And I invite you to this. Stay there and just feel. Nothing to give, nowhere to go, nothing to get. Just with your attention and your skin in your hands. So the only thing I'm asking you to do at this point is just to recognize that you are in action towards a felt sense in your skin. That's it. So you do something by choice to feel something that feels nice.
the mind wanders, that's fine. That's what the mind does. Uh, let it do its stuff and bring your attention back to the senses then in your skin, in your hands. The invitation and the intention lays here on feeling with your skin, feeling with your hands. The slower you go, the more you will feel. Your own speed and your own time. Mind on you until you stop. Stay there for a moment and just sense in your body, just feel, notice what you notice. your eyes, bring your attention back to the screen. So what is this stupid, boring, motherfucking exercise actually for? Why the heck are we doing that? What do you notice? You want to share? Um, actually, for me, it's uh, it's not boring. It's uh, really relaxing and uh, also quite pleasurable. Yeah. 
It's really calming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same with me. I was quite calm before, and now I turned into being um, tired, actually, because I'm not so well. Um, and by the end, when you said, okay, notice your body, I noticed that I have a little bit of headache. But when I put my attention there, it fades. So it's cool. If you go into pain, it goes away. I like that thing. And, and I just love the hand meditation. I just think hands are such great. I mean, hands are such a wonder. Mm -hmm. So nice to feel. Yeah, I think for me, it's, it's very fast way to check into my body. Uh, it's, very, it's very durable, of course. And yeah, I feel uh, I feel grounded, and I really love this meditation. Yeah, I just found out that if I put I I use this stone if I if I put it on a in a certain way, exactly on this finger, it's like a very, very orgasmic feeling. <laughs> and it reminded me of, uh, I can talk about it later, but it's exactly the same feeling that I sometimes, not always, get when I I need to pee and I'm in outside in the woods and it's a bit cold and I have to hold myself. And just before I pee, I get this orgasmic feeling all around my gum mm. it just goes around and around and around until i start to pee and it just disappears mm. and i've had it since i was a kid wow yeah i don't study you yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. check it Davida, would you like to be muted? I'm here. I was trying to give uh, the link to let enter my ex-partner and partner, but I haven't found it at the moment. She wanted to participate, but I, it's the only time the problem is linked because inside of Mighty, we cannot share because it's not a member. So it's not too simple. But um, can... I can send you the link right here if you want to. In WhatsApp, where you send me? Uh, well, you want to have it in WhatsApp or here? WhatsApp is more faster for me. Otherwise, I need to. So, at the same time, it's... I always said that it's so boring, this exercise, that in the time the other was speaking, I was continuing to do it. <laughs> because it's seven minutes. It was too short. <laughs> okay. Uh, at the same time, I'm sending this. Sorry. Um. Uh, yeah, for me, I found this uh, um, little places like uh, the, sorry, the other guy was saying this is very, very sensitive and sensual and pleasurable that just going there, it's amazing. And uh, this exercise, boys, girls, friends, <clears throat> it gives you an enhanced power of sensation. I can give in many months, my life is changed for the just for this exercise. Uh, I have uh, much more pleasure to, to also to touch myself. It's another world. So just continue. <laughs> to do it i love it okay. thank you arif i don't know if you have joined us would you like to share anything anything that you notice if you have participated in the meditation okay. 
I assume you're somehow somewhere different. Um, yeah, I just uh, noticed that when I when I did that is how often I specifically when I do that with people who are there the first time with strangers, how weird that must be, you know, when the mind is just like on alert and it's like trying to grasp and comprehend what's going on and then this thing <laughs> leaning back and having and so I it's, it's just, just like swimming against the stream because people judging it and it's so boring just like and and this question why the heck are we doing that and it's just like just wait a second just do it first and then I can explain a little bit more because then you have a somatic experience that you can hang on some cognitive information that you have literally access to so um just for the case you want to show that to different people on different stages you swim against the stream of cognitive boredom so I just want to let you know okay um anybody brought anything for today whatever that is questions notifications experiences um, difficulties challenges ahas, insights, enlightenment. Yeah, I can, I can share something, please. Um, <clears throat> I had uh, uh, I had a um, friend from the last retreat we was in Spain. Uh, she was here uh, uh, just through the weekend, and uh, 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 she want to have uh, two sessions of the armory. And yesterday, I gave her a uh, um, this name. I I just forget the. Uh, cervix, <laughs> yeah, cervix, uh, the armoring, and it was it was my first, uh, yeah, second try, and it was really the first try after the the course, and it felt really, it was really interesting because I feel like it was a very big aha, <laughs> um. A moment for me to to just explore uh, the uni and also to be connected in in a new way. I feel like I felt so. Uh, yeah, it it was very interesting. Uh, and very new for me, so so, uh, yeah. Um, that's that's what I I want to say. Yeah. Congratulations! I'm well, really happy for you. Thank so, you. So, you know, you know, I've been, I've been. Um, when I started, that was a midwife. She said, just like I have literally four eyes. It's like one, two, three, four. You know, and if you would just know what these two fingers have seen, it's just those. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, it's interesting. Thanks for sharing. I appreciate that. Thank awesome. you. Okay, anything else from anybody? Otherwise, I have something that I want to share. I would like just, I'm unconnected. Yes. Um, uh, I would like to present this exercise uh, in group, in a group. Okay, I will go how I can. I don't know if you want to give some um, uh, line to to say how you prefer, because it's your somatic consent uh, trademark uh, system method. I don't know if uh, I'm asking. First of all, may I present to a group of people in the future if I I'm trying to organize a workshop and uh, I
would go or not this workshop, but in case we go, I would like to present the first of all, may I do it? And if yes, maybe if you want to give some uh, indication, I don't know, that's what is coming to me. Sure. Um, can say a few words about that. Hi, Camilla, welcome. Um, we have just done the hand meditation and the check-in. Just to, <laughs> This is recorded. Uh, you're a little bit late. Everything is confidential. Please say yes. Switch on yes. the camera on and off. Thank you <laughs> whenever you like. Um, um, we just got the first or the second question about what we're doing here. So please feel free to join in if you have any question at any time please jump in is a it's a being you space here okay thank you you're welcome okay david great question yes um i have not invented that exercise and on this exercise is no trademark or copyright or anything else i have just found it by a coincident and i've i found the combination with uh, the consent work absolutely embodying and empowering and please absolutely yes go for it you don't even need to mention my name or somatic consent if you don't want to uh, the thing is if you only do the hand exercise with people as a meditation form without giving any context people asking and i've seen that so many times just like why the heck are we doing that where is it going what is it for and so so please be prepared with some context that you can give to people why that is and how that works and um and um i wish you good luck <laughs> yeah okay thanks yeah. The, the the only thing is just like you know the, the 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 copyright and the trademark on somatic consent that i have is just like the, the the word somatic consent in combination with a triangle no you can't yeah i know okay is it no is it back it's back yeah um so here it is that's it so I, this is what i have the trademark and the copyright for beside that just like feel totally freed um and of course, you have no rights to use your thing, consent lab, foundation of somatic consent, the three pillars of relating or professional intensive in, in, in combination with somatic consent. That's the only thing beside that, use it. Yeah. Okay, cool. I'm so excited to take a moment and share with you my de armoring and sexual empowerment coaching certification. This program has been around for almost 10 years and is my highest offering. Sexual wellness is forecasted to be a $125 billion industry by 2026. Why? Because Tantra is booming like yoga 20 years ago and people are more ready than ever to express their sexuality, build deeply connected relationships and have the most outrageous orgasms and erotic experience of their lives. However, most people are never taught how to do any of this how to have extraordinary relationships and the sex that they really crave. They're looking for qualified, confident professionals to teach them. So my de-armoring and sexual empowerment coaching certification is a powerful one-year professional program that helped many coaches become incredible, successful and highly paid professionals. This program doesn't just train you in every aspect of the coaching process so that you can build a successful online business. This coaching also walks you for the personal transformation of a lifetime because the best coaches have done their work themselves. And on top, I show you all the tech secrets how to create a thriving online business. But first and foremost, you'll discover transformative techniques like the empowerment tools, meditation practices, and pleasuring pathway that you'll apply to your own life first. Then you use all the same proven tools and techniques to get laser-focused results for your clients. We also hold an exclusive de-armoring training just for our coaching students and alumni every year. In this training, you'll experience a 10 day of life teaching with other teachers and me, refining your skills as a de-armoring and sexual empowerment coach. 
So, if you feel the call to claim your spot in this multi-billion dollar industry and transform not only your own life, but the life of many others around the world, get on the waiting list now at somaticarrows.com slash empowermentcoaching and I love to see you there and welcome you. Yeah, if I can term it, what I want just to bring the people it is to feel the difference when they do the exercise on themselves. So there is an inflow of sensation and when there is indirect flow of sensation that we have, we do something to someone else to receive something. I want the people to start to wondering on these two different things. This is my mm -hmm. goal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. So um, I would like to share in a little bit, a little um, uh, keynote slide about the difference between, no, not the difference, the three components of pleasure. Some of you might remember that what that is, what that has to do with this object. But first I would like to share one little piece I had just recently um, with, a, with a client and it was really interesting. And this person was sharing um, about like, and it came now in my mind, as you said, David, there was somebody dying and, and the dynamics of death. And so this person was just like, um, or is in a situation physically with a disease where he probably dies sooner than normal people. Yeah. And so, so my work with him is more or less being in the directive kind of just like, yeah, just bring your present awareness into your, um, into yourself. So, you know, when you die that you literally, you just train your awareness to be aware of what's going on. So, so, so because the I, the mind, the ego, the identification is the only thing that will die. And that part that is eternal, that will probably somehow do something, go into light or whatever. We don't know because we haven't been there yet, but to stay there that you just let go of the of the um, fear of dying, just like you just allow dying to happen. And what my experience is that, um, that the process of dying or the experience of being there as far as I have access to that is orgasmic, ecstatic. Yeah, so my, my body went orgasmic and ecstatic. So, and that has a lot to do with this part in the nervous system of the dorsal uh, parasympathetic, this part of, you know, the brainstem activity where you just surrender into, you know, you just, you just give yourself into what is going to happen. And then we talked about specifically as men, how to use our sexual energy in a conscious way, because in, in French, and he speaks French, there is this saying that the male orgasm calls le petit moi the little death and instead of having the three seconds of the little death it's just like you just use everything that you learn here with what you experience with your skin and with your body and with your sensuality and sexuality when you just bring that into your sex and into your love making then there is no need to die the little death then you you um go into les grands um, moi. <laughs> and that means just like you just all what you do is just like you just let your ego die and just get orgasmic and have fun for the rest of your life and enjoy what's happening amen <laughs> <laughs> yes bro <laughs> any reflections on that from, from anybody yeah I have a little bit of a reflection uh, I think two years ago, I had this really crazy ayahuasca journey where uh, I somehow, I don't know how I understood, but it came to me that an orgasm, an ayahuasca journey, and life, they, both, all three have some stuff in common, right? They all three produce DMT. From like from birth to death and etc. And the process is more or less the same. If you're 
too goal oriented in all the three processes, then you probably won't have an enjoyable life, right? A, a enjoyable process. So you have to be here and now. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, this, you know, it's, it's an interesting thing with this thing here, you know, touching it and feeling it. What I what I used to say is just like you just train your awareness is is not even is never it was never about the object, right? Um, and then you just actually activate your skin and your hands and the inflow and your feeling center, and it's not even that. This is this is just what the training is for. You just come back to yourself, but what is really for? Now I need to something else in my hand because it's, <laughs> it's I love it. Um, because when you have when you have your attention trained, you 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 and the attention is capable of being aware of itself. So awareness is is aware of awareness. So awareness is turning back, and all of a sudden you're just like, whoa, this is just it's just whoa. It's just like like a short holiday as long as you can stay there. But what the main thing is, what it trains, it trains you to be present. There's no other way, you know, to be not present when you're in connection with that one. And I was just kind of analyzing that a little bit on a scientific level as well, that when you when you have this one going on, the inflow, and you feel yourself, the nerve ending here to your feeling center, they take a 30th of a second. Yeah, so it goes super fast. Because these fibers that are here in your skin, the so-called C fibers, they are for, for high speed um, sensation, even when you, do, you need to slow down really a lot to, to feel that. But that has to do with another part of the brain. But the thing is, when you, when you feel that, in the 30s of a second, it is just like not to burn your finger on the hot stove that you have a damage that when you touch something really hot it just goes away so that the that the sensory inflow and the motor response is causing that reflex and that's that's the reason why you take it away but the rational thinking mind works in a quarter to in a in a in in, in an eighth or something if you have a really fast mind of a second so this inflow is literally three times as fast as your rational thinking mind. And that's the reason why you're getting so freaking present when you do that. And if you want to do this with DMT release, specifically, you know, in ayahuasca is a different thing or life or birth, but when it comes to sexuality and sensual inflow and feeling it, because you're releasing this tons of oxytocin and that is just regulating your nervous system. And oxytocin, is, I, as far as I understand, because it's a it's a similar component than vasopressin with one different component, what is L-arginine in the body, whatever that means, it doesn't really matter. But what it does is it's massively included in the DMT production. The repeat, sorry? Oxytocin is massively included in the DMT production. There are other stuff in there, other en enzymes and neurotransmitter and stuff in that, like melatonin and you, but, but oxytocin or vasopressin is an important part of that. So yes, um, no oxytocin, no DMT. So I have a question. Please. Yeah. How to make it, um, I don't know if it's the right word, repeatable. Because I had a lot of wonderful, amazing experience, spiritual experience. But it seems like there is a um, parameter that does not belong to me. You know, it's like the moon is, <laughs> something is not, should be, something outside of me should be aligned with me. So then that bring me in a state or I don't know, the condition are good. So that bring me in a state so I can, I can uh, experience wonderful, I don't know, sensation. And, 
my experience is, is very difficult, at least for me. I don't know, I didn't find the secret yet to recall those experience knowing i'm not recalling i don't want to call the same experience or the but to be in the same state when i want basically to be in this state when i want and it feels like uh i, I don't know how to i you know i can do, can have period of time i will do meditation and i will have amazing experience feel good i can redo the same meditation in another time as long and I will not feel the same way. So how to okay, do you is it all the time can you enter in those states when you decide or yes I I would I would say yes uh to a degree and my experience in that is you know each and one of here that you see is probably dedicated to to their own personal growth yeah and when you just come to the point of recognizing um uh where you might be stuck then you and you dedicated you just do your work you know and on on one point you just choose to you know clean up your past for example all all conditioning all traumatic experiences so your personal your, your your personal development so you just do stuff different therapies or whatever and when you have done your work on your personal level then you start doing it more on a on a um um a family level or you know maybe on a tribe or on a community level you know just friends and and then you just help other people to just like do their stuff and you just process with them and you just create another version of yourself in relating in connection and um and then when you have done that work there you just literally grow on a spiritual level and then you just operate more on a collective level yeah and you know, it doesn't matter on which level you operate. It doesn't matter how much work you do. Uh, it doesn't matter what the entrance point is. It might be breath work. It might be meditation. It might be sexuality. It might be a workout or yoga or whatever it is. You can only go the entire way. Let's say this side of the screen is just like where you start. And this side is your spiritual experience. You can only go with every effort that you do, whatever you do, half the way and 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 half the way doesn't matter how hard you work you will never arrive there the last little bit is in my experience it just happens by grace it's divine you know so and when you have this experience just like you try fucking everything to go back there what i have what i have experienced and that's why i love this little piece with this object what we're doing is it's so universal because when you have access to the sensory inflow of your nervous system, what happens is, and unfortunately you were a little bit later, um, but you can come back at any Monday if you want to, there is something happening in your nervous system when you actually touch and feel and you are in action that is kind of short-circuiting in your brain your motor what's in your somatic nervous system responsible for your action and your sensory inflow what is literally feeling stuff in your body external and internal and when you slow down enough yeah and you start feeling and you create that short circuit um something is happening in your nervous system a rewiring i have no idea exactly how it works but it works and what the what the effect or the outcome of that is because it's just the beginning of that and i might talk more about this dynamic of the three minute game and the engagement how you can engage with other people and opening that up specifically releasing oxytocin and dopamine and all the other neurotransmitter is that you have so many opportunities to get this last half step like in a kiss of grace that allows you to step into this spiritual experience 
like in nothing else that I could find. But you cannot copy it, you cannot plan it. <laughs> okay. What's 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 the other one's experience? Nicola, would you like to share something? Yeah. Um the question you raised, um this this was also a question of me before, and um this is one of the main questions um because I like to analyze things like how the hell did I get there? You know, and um and I think it's like I mean, I mean we we probably have different bread recipes or different ingredients we all need. I probably need a little bit more of this and you need a little bit more of that depending on your on 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 my story on what i'm good in what i'm what my my um are and for me one hindrance is um impatience and it's this oh, i know i've i've been to certain points and and i, I want to go there again and uh and I read this really beautiful sentence that's uh, that becomes uh, kind of a mantra to me in life. And this is uh, out of a tantric book. And um, this uh, uh, goddess said, uh, she said, the consciousness is also breathing in and out. It's inhaling and exhaling. So it's never, it's never a line of of growth. So it it goes, it follows the natural circulation of going up and down. And then for me, it's uh, it it feels like. Oh, uh, I'm, uh, I'm, you know, I can exhale and can feel like, okay, my consciousness sometimes goes down and it's fine because it has to, and then it can rise up again and can have another wave. And then I, you know, kind of like, I love that picture. It's just giving a lot to me. And um, yeah, that's, I thought about that. Maybe that's one little, little ingredients I need to, to ease up for, for actually, and, and yeah, to, to ease up really. Yeah. And trust, trust is a, a very big one, very big one. Yeah. Camelia, does that brought you closer to an answer what you have heard from me and Nicola? Mm. Not exactly, but I try to stay open because you know what I don't know is where I'm not looking for. So. <laughs> um, I, I try to, to stay open because in fact, in fact, my my question is is more like um, how to 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 get there when I want. Otherwise, it's okay. I just accept that life bring me there when it wants, and then I'm not there. But I still feel like is it possible to have con a control there? So then I can decide to switch and be in this space when I want and choose to not be also because sometimes you need to be focused also so when I don't want and for a long time I was just there when when I don't want I'm there sometimes and when I I, I would like to be there uh, I'm not so I was wondering just that if you you because you said yes you you can choose when you want to be in this space and uh, yeah yeah, so so some people use breath, breath work, holotropic mm. breathing, and um, I have just like invented it. I have not invented it, but I've put it in together. That's my invention. This exercise as a meditation, touching an object, and I don't know if you have done it or if you have heard about yes, it. Yes, yes. In fact, I know David is uh, my partner, so I can tell you he told me he speak about this. Ah, so, 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 uh, you, you, Camilla, <laughs> you're the ex partner from David. Well, yes, yes. okay, not very clear. Now, now, now I connect the dots. Okay, got you. So, 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 so you know about it. Then you yeah, it so, but anyway, okay, so uh, I know about, about it. I, I practiced uh, many times also with him. So, yes, I, I found. Uh, this method very interesting. I also even try it uh, because I'm a tantra teacher, so I try it also with uh, some client to to see just as an experience. And uh, I had also wonderful um, 
experience, you know, just to do this practice before to do a massage to yourself. And uh, I had a beautiful, I like to experience with people. And then that's why also I'm here because I would like to know a lot more because I see that uh, it has a special effect. Yes, on me and also on others. So. Perfect, you're very welcome. Okay, anybody else? Fabio and Shaheep, Naeem, anything? Um, I was actually asking myself what you're talking about, like the spiritual experience that you mean. Is it just like being present in the moment or some crazy, I don't know, divine it's, experience? Like, It's, it's a crazy wooey-dooey woo-woo energy magic. Are you talking uh, to me, Camille? Uh, jo Love you, yeah. Oh, for me, it's like when suddenly you you don't feel your people like to say you don't feel the separation. You don't know where you are anymore, and you feel like you are at the same time everything, and it gives a kind of sensation of of love. It's uh, it's very special that sometimes I can be sad and at the same time feel so much love so I don't even know if it's an emotion it's the kind of state of being that is very ecstatic and, uh, and amazing and I had this many times but I would like to know of a, I'm in a search to how to choose how, or how to to get there you know when i want or because it's it is very beautiful and it is also a part of me uh, i would like to to experience more to know more about that okay so so happy you were unmuted are you sorry unmuted? yeah no i'm talking too sharp uh do you, do you want some comment from me about my yeah it, it, it looked like you were unmuting yourself do you have any question or any comments or anything you would like to add no you know the times that i felt what camellia is talking about is uh mostly well if if, if not this uh, if there are not any substances <laughs> yeah, um, what do you call it uh if we're talking about times when you don't use substances to reach there then most of the times i've done it uh during uh, breath work i can reach that through through breath work and the funny thing is that well i mentioned that i was in morocco for uh, some days and most of the time we were partying but there were two girl, girls who actually uh, had uh, gave us a breath work session a 60 minute breath work session which were really really mild it didn't affect me that much uh, even though it was nice but after 15 or 20 minutes after the breath work se session i was feeling pretty calm only i was still lying there and all of a sudden this song came i've heard it before and i sometimes play it for myself but uh there is a part of this song where th there is a guy who, who is singing just like uh, <laughs> I don't know he has this really special uh, there's a special sound to his song and as soon as he that came it just took me somewhere my body started to you know I was lying on my on my uh, back and my back and my head was just like going like like a wave and i just exploded for one and a half minutes two minutes and i was screaming and shouting and this is these people weren't you know the spiritual kind of people it was 30 of us and people got really scared uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> it, it was almost like an orgasm and I've never felt it before like that. Mm. Usually I, I can feel it coming 
during the breath work, and this was 20 minutes after. It, it was like this sound just triggered my body to explode. Mm. It was, and I tried, and I cried for like five minutes after that. Also, mm. <laughs> so beautiful. Thanks, <laughs> thanks, Shahab. Yeah. So, I mean, the the last five cents that I would just give to that is, you know, when you when you start doing this hands thing, and um, and when you start using that in relationship in connection. Um, in the beginning, it's just about feeling good and feeling pleasure, yeah. And on one point, what will happen is you just start feeling everything, and that means that you will start feeling the stuff that you don't like, and all that stuff in your nervous system, in your body, in your conditioning that doesn't feel good. And when it's about feeling, then it means just not only feeling good; it means feeling everything. And every feeling everything doesn't mean like that you live your entire life in bliss and harmony and ecstasy. It means just like you just live an embodied life, and that means just like whatever comes is is real. And um, um, how do you say that? If this spiritual state of ecstasy or bliss is the 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 only goal and 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 doing everything to stay there it can easily be a spiritual bypassing just like i just i just only want to feel good i don't want to feel the bad and the wrong and and and, and laugh can be an addiction just saying Okay, <clears throat> I would like to show you this little um, slide about the three components of pleasure. Who, is, who has seen that? Who knows the three components of pleasure? Some of you know. Okay. I just need to move my computer a little bit. Probably I'm not fucking with the sound again. Okay. So I share my screen. It's the three components of pleasure. Can you see that triangle? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And um, that. And can you see now an empty screen? Yes. Okay. Perfect. So the three components of pleasure. Um, I love that because it has to do with this structure, direct and indirect pleasure, and but mainly with the sensory inflow of touching an object. So what is pleasure? What is joy? Mainly in this case, I'm talking about the dynamics of pleasure and joy in combination with, um, wait a second, um, you guys are on the wrong screen. I want to see you. So in this case, I'm talking about the sensory inflow and what is pleasure to you and how you experience that. And um, when I'm talking about the three components of pleasure, the first component is always your attention. Your energy flows where attention goes. So the first component is you train your um, attention in presence, in here nowness. And uh, the, the second component of pleasure is the, the meaning. And this is where most people get lost. The meaning of um, when I'm taking this little piece in my hand, it's a piece of plastic that is written on Sony. It's a cap from my camera. It's probably a one cent piece of a fabric made in China and it's probably polluted the world somehow somewhere but if I don't have it the backside of my camera will contain dust and blah 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 so the meaning yeah and this is what most people do we're putting so much freaking meaning on things that everything else is secondary so we only use the meaning and within the meaning we 
engage our frontal lobe of our neocortex, the working brain. So we just we we need to work out stuff. We need to figure out stuff. So this is everything around um, working stuff out, creating context, a story, mind, and most of the time ego is a survival mechanism. So we need to make an understanding of things. Yeah, this is where most people have their priority, their preference in life. Just like this is important and only this. So the third component of pleasure, this is what the stimuli is. It is based on the sensation in your nervous system, in your skin. And it's either on or off. On or off. There's not much more to that. This is so freaking simple that everything around the meaning part, the stimuli, uh, the stimuli is getting boring. Because the meaning has so much weight in our experience of life that everything that is based on the sensation, on the stimuli, has just like it's just not existence nearly. Um, so the stimuli is literally engaging another part of our awareness and our brain. It's a noticing brain. And this part of the brain, this is where we're creating the experience of choice about the experience that we want to have and where we create an environment of safety and connection because it's tapping into the bonding part of the nervous system, so the sensory feeling. And um, so the stimuli is literally related to the sensation of the body and the somatic feeling, so this part of the brain. So now the important thing here, I don't know if there's anything else. No, can it that way? Way. So, so the the stimuli and the meaning they are as well connected. So it's not only that our attention goes to the story, to the meaning, to the context. We can train, and that's what we're doing with this sensation. We're bringing our attention to the stimuli, and we're bringing more awareness to the stimuli. In fact, I would say making this conscious choice that the stimuli and what the body is experiencing has more impact on our experience of life than actually the meaning. But now, when and that's an individual choice, if you can bring the default of your experience to the stimuli and make the meaning secondary, the meaning and the stimuli they're having a connection as well. And that means like you can either amplify your stimuli through the meaning or you can decrease it. So you can either, for example, say just like, yeah, that's a, that's a shit plastic cap from Sony. It's just like made in China from... I don't know, and, and all this kind of story. That's like, I'm not touching something of plastic. I'm only touching wood, only touching natural stuff. Yeah. So I could literally uh, decrease my experience by making that decision that this is not worth it for me to feel. Or I could say, you know, this cap here, this cap was the backside of a camera lens that has been used for a movie that made an Oscar. Yeah, and this is a $500 cap. And when I touch that, I'm in connection with this Oscar movie about, I don't know, Dustin Hoffman, the Rain Man, or I don't know what st story. And it's a very special cap. And when I touch that, my experience is just like much higher than I actually can ever have touching somebody else. So I can use my my the context and the meaning to increase the experience. And I want to tell you a story about that. A friend of mine, some of you might have heard that story, sitting in a bathtub in Bali, you know, touching the edge of the bathtub and just just sky and it's warm and hearing the crickets and everything is nice and rubbing her finger on this nice little piece there on the bathtub. It feels so delicious and good. Yeah, and she's nearly blissing out, feeling the sensation. The next morning, um, 
she just like passes by the bathtub and having a look what that was. It was dried chicken shit. Would she have had the same experience in the night? I don't know. But, you know, she didn't know what it was. She didn't give it any meaning or context. And she had this experience of feeling it. So why I'm saying that is when you experience this inflow, not only with an object, when you experience that with somebody else, you can put the meaning of somebody on your touch to either increase or decrease the experience. That's what I want to say. So you can make somebody else the source of your blissful sensations. Ta-da! Stop sharing. Doesn't make sense, that thing, meaning and stimuli. Any questions? Yes, it is making a lot of sense. Uh, and for me, uh, like an actor based on the all the method of sensation, what I learn is just to stay with the sensation. Try to not connect with the meaning. Yes, we know we have a, there is a meaning. There is. But just stay with the sheet on the bathtub if you can and just stay with the sensation. Or if, if I touch my sheet when I'm clean, sorry for maybe this... Uh, not nice imagine. I don't give it any any meaning. Is it okay? Is it shit? It's okay. How is how is touch? How it is? There. So really, for me, like an actor, it's really important to to break the meaning. Try to stay with the sensation, uh, but this is really sexual work. We made it all the time. Also because the sensation is the base of everything we do in and can help us in on stage. Because if I need to have a, a, a fake that uh, I'm drinking and hot tea, but I don't have it, I can recreate this experience just from the, the research that I made with the real one so many times, and then try to do the research without that one. So mm. like how it is to have a, a cup of hot tea in my hand when I don't have it, but I don't need to fake to try to pretend that outside of me, they will see the cup. No, I just need to try to stay with the sensation, how it is, how it will be. And when it will, I will have some spark of the sensation, then it happened also that from outside, they see that I have something like a tea or coffee in my hand. So this is funny. Yeah. I, I You know, just like what, what, what comes to my mind when you say that is this thing is just, you know, there's there's no no right or wrong or good and bad on on this one. It's just like you know this is it's it's you when you have the power of choice, you can either put a meaning on stuff and increases, or you can choose to put a meaning on stuff and and decreases. So I, I, this this is what I'm saying. Or you can just stay just only with the stimuli, or you just create a completely story without feeding anything. But when you have this as a context, um, uh, as an understanding, then it makes it much easier to see and feel when other people, how they engage with the sensation. Yeah. And if, if, if people are stuck in the story or stuck in the meaning or stuck in the, in the context and, uh, and then the feeling sensing thing has another impact on them. Okay, what's well, pleasure to you? That's a question for each one of you. And what I would like to do is just uh, um, this is a smaller group, a minute or so, that each and one of you has the opportunity for one minute to talk and reflect on pleasure. Yeah, And you can say whatever pleasure is to you. If you don't want to do it, you don't pass but if you want to take that opportunity and talk for one minute on what is pleasure for you feel absolutely free to speak you rumble you don't say it for us you say it for yourself no time left. 
who would like to start? What's a pleasure to you? I can start. <clears throat> For me, pleasure. <sighs> Makes me smile. Um, and uh, just seeing this triangle you just showed us, um, this uh, part attention is very nice for me because um, this is a thing I can do with my mind, which is very pleasurable. I can have a super focus on things while I'm touching or while I'm also being touched. Then I, I focus on this on this nice sensation and then it feels like there's um up it, it gets it gets very it gets very microcosmic somehow and in this microcosmos it, it gets very spacey and wide and opens up and this is this um feeling of freedom and timelessness and uh to to know that 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 I'm exactly at the right place, that that I just want to be exactly at that place and not going anywhere and not being somewhere and not putting other things in just micro cos cosmic, going into this fine fine pleasurable, mini moments and mini moment after mini moment and yeah this is uh, this is what my my mind can actually do with with focus and I'm so. Okay. Time. Yay. <laughs> Yay, time. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I probably need another sound here. Um, I don't know. I don't have a. I just choose any. No, I, I, I give you a sign. I do that. <laughs> Okay, who's next? I can go next. Please. Uh, pleasure for me is when I really lose the sense of time. And uh, it feels like I, I just want to be there forever. That's all. Still have 45 Thank seconds, you. Nahim. Thank have, you. Have, have your pleasure. <laughs> Thank you. I, I am happy and I have a lot of pleasure. Thanks. You want to take advantage of the last 30 seconds? Still yours, even if you don't speak. Yeah, I can. Um, I can enjoying. Have a pleasure to be silent. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Five, four, <laughs> three, two, one. Okay. Welcome, gentlemen. You have mastered the art of pleasure, but you're not the type to settle for the ordinary, right? You're after the extraordinary. You're not just driving a car in life. You want the Tesla experience in every aspect, especially in your intimate relationships and your sexuality. So it's not about dissatisfaction. It's about exploring deeper. You know greatness, now you seek to be the best. More presence, more connection, not just reaching a goal, but transforming it. Perhaps you have heard about Tantra and feel intrigued by its promises. But what does it truly offer? Imagine not just giving your partner moments of pleasure, but leading them into an ecstatic state and keeping them there. An orgasmic state of being for both of you. I understand the subtleties that make good great. For over 20 years, I've guided men like you to deepen their understanding, to discover what lies beyond the climax. So to take private sessions with me, that will put you right on target what you want to achieve, instead of wasting hundreds of hours in workshops and online courses, even though they can be fun and they are great. So if you are ready to explore these profound possibilities, I'm here to guide you. So let's redefine what pleasure can mean to you. So reach out for a free discovery call on this link here and let's embark on this journey to endless contentment. You are extraordinary is waiting. See you on the call. Thank you, Naim.
Okay, you want to go next? Yes. Okay, please. Um, I feel like for me, pleasure has multiple dimensions. Like there's mental pleasure that I can have from having a strategy unfolding itself and making plans and they work out. And yeah, somehow like being in control of my or being in power of of the pathway of my life in some in some way like having an idea or a vision and making it come true it feels like gives me energy sometimes and um, yeah then there's also like uh, physical pleasure like i have uh, i have some spots in my body that are really really sensitive and um then being able to completely let go of control and just feeling the sensation or getting touched by someone else in these areas is, yeah, very nice. Thank you. I can go. Um, <clears throat> for me, pleasure most of the time is this tickling sensation when you have butterflies in your stomach and body and you're looking forward to do something or or you're into that whatever it is um and it's also for me could be you know absence in the absence of fear this, there is a calmness that I sometimes can feel where there is no uh, anxiousness or fear for anything. You know, your body just floats. Um, yeah. So, and also, yeah. Physical pleasure, you know. If for me, it's nice job. Time. Yeah. Okay. Wow. That was. Please. Yeah, I can. I can go. <sighs> yeah, but I'm resonating with uh, Fabian and Shahab's. I think pleasure for me is also. Um, multi-dimensional. I'm thinking of pleasure I get from sometimes when I'm just feeling the breeze, you know, beautiful weather, the breeze on my on my body, my face. And I'm thinking of physical pleasure sometimes when I'm, you know, uh, when there's sex, body and all that. So what's interesting to me is uh, I think pleasure has to do with when I'm just being very super present in the moment. Because the same things can happen, the same stimuli can happen. And if I'm not present, then you know, I don't really get much pleasure out of it. Um, also the meaning as well. So I'm just really connect, connecting with, with the triangle that you mentioned earlier. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. It's like um, when you sink deep in your body, or maybe to a place, I don't know. When you feel like there is intensity, and but at the same time, a kind of um, calmness. Then you feel like um, aliveness. The pleasure to feel um, 
the matter. And I remember sometimes there can be like a kind of expansion. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Camilla. But that is more energetic. Thank you. It's my turn. If you want to. Yes. Um, for sure, pleasure have to do with for me first of all with senses, the five senses, all the sensation that can procurate me this feeling that's called pleasure. I don't know what it is. I'm just still wondering, wondering. Obviously, there is a pleasure that is also the result of something that I made with my mind. I create something, a video, a show a part and it gives me a kind of pleasure it's a different one of that the one that i received through sensation through the senses so this is more intellectual and i was wondering but there is also maybe a soul a pleasure of the soul so when you are in a bliss in an ecstatic moment it is pleasurable so like the other said there are multi-dimensional way to 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 feel or to be in pleasure. And the question is that was an old uh, meeting, what is the difference with pain? It is just a chemical, a different chemical uh, production in our body because... Uh, uh, mm -hmm. okay, thank you. Matt, was pleasure for you? Yes, this is what I want to say. Thank you. Um, I agree with everything that everybody said. And um, it just depends. Sometimes pleasure can be something really simple, just the kind of electromagnetic thing sometimes. And wait a second, I just need to set a timer as well. <laughs> Otherwise, I start to start philosophical excursions um so the sensation on my skin and uh, i can have mental or rational pleasure i can have emotional pleasure i can have spiritual pleasure um and it's pretty much depends on where i am is my was in, in life um and what i like to say about that is it doesn't really matter what it is it just matters that you choose to follow or that i choose to follow and what ever the direction is so there's there's no box um uh, what pleasure is it just depends on where i am and, and what is happening and um and being flexible and creative was my experience and having the choice that's pretty much pleasure for me. All right. Yeah. So it's it's it's. I think pleasure is undefinable for for one person is um, um, chains and knives, and for another person is feathers and love, and uh, and everybody has to choose what pleasure is. It's undefinable. Everybody needs to make their own choice. And as long as it fits between two consenting adults playing something, ideally the three minute game. So it doesn't matter what you do as, as long as you just enjoy. All right, it's 8.30. Uh, let's go for a check out. What's your main aha? And um, how do you feel right now? Just a few words. We want to start. Yeah, go for it, Elvis. Matt, so um, so I missed a, little, a big chunk of this, but from what I got, it was very valuable. So my big takeaway um, was the importance of nervous system health and to to take care of it and to learn more about it. 
And so I'm leaving feeling curious and pretty inspired to continue with this. Thanks for joining. My main uh -huh. time lived following and searching the pleasure since I was really young, really, really young. And my first book that I really read and was my Bible was the title The Pleasure. It was a romance. And but now reflecting really deeply. Yes, I know what is pleasure, but I want to know something more deep. What is behind? What is what, behind this sensation that gives us the, the pleasure of life? Because when I'm in pain, I don't want to live. But when I have pleasure, I want to do, I want more. Give me more. I want to live. I want this experience. If I'm in pain and everything is going wrong eh, and this creating uh, pain, no, no. I, I threw it away my life. So what is there? What is there that's making my my day and night? My Please pleasure bring that pain. question to the next Monday. I was happy to chew more on that. <laughs> okay, I can speak. My experience of life is. Um, a lot of pleasure bring to pain and a lot of pain bring to pleasure. But there is a kind of cycle. I experience a lot of pain because maybe I had also a kind of pleasure to just be in my emotional state and just still in this. Can I, can I interrupt you here? My, yes. my, the question is, what's your main takeaway of the day and how do you feel? Ah. Um, I feel uh, I feel good. I feel like uh, I would like to know uh, more about uh, your method. That's also why I'm there. I feel not from earlier, so I guess I just I, mean, I didn't uh, get a, a bit of things. But from what you show with the triangle, uh, I question myself about oh, um, is it possible to do that conscious? Uh, consciously to announce an experience or to diminish uh, an experience. Mm. That was my yeah, reflection. Welcome to join oh. the crew. Davide can you can tell you how? Who's next? Um, I can go next. My main takeaway is that I can be sick, having a headache, and still feel really good. <laughs> and it's it's making me, giving me so much pleasure to be with you guys and girls and goddess and gods and uh, also watching you, feeling you. Yeah, it feels really good for me. Thank you. And my main takeaway today is to focus even more on learning about, you know, learning more about how to put my attention and, and exercise my attention. I think that's one of my um, I have to work on it. <laughs> so, yeah. What was the second thing? How do you feel? <laughs> I feel good. good. <laughs> that answered the, actually the attention. <laughs> so, training my attention and being present. Two questions. <laughs> How do you feel? What's your main takeaway? <laughs> A bit tired, my body. Yeah, That's no. all right. No worries. <laughs> yeah. Check. Check. Yes, I can go next. Um, 
Yeah, my takeaway is to explore uh, different dimensions of the pleasure. And uh, I feel really good. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to see you, all of you here. Thank you. Um, yes, yeah, so oh, um, I'm speaking, yeah. I'm also quite tired. I uh, was like touching myself with the object the whole time and now I feel very sleepy, um, but also really good. And it's really nice to, yeah, to look in all of your faces and yes. Um, yeah, I feel really in the, in the moment and in the present right now, it feels very good. Yeah. Everybody's spoken, I think so, except me, right? All right. My main takeaway is um, uh, you guys being here. I love that. Thank you for joining me today. And uh, I feel I want to have a bath. I just want to just, just want to have a hot bath. That's what I want. That's what's what I feel like. That's probably the main pleasure that I can have at the moment. Thank you for joining today. Sorry, we're a little bit over bad timing mr matt and um please invite other people to join the monthly monday or to join the academy invite people to do that stuff here because i think this can really change the world that's what my main pleasure would be can a bit more people getting this what we're doing here have a beautiful day thank you and uh see you next time all right bye, bye. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.